Dean. Hello, this is Dean Takahashi with VentureBeat. I'm here with Richard Marks uh, from uh, Sony, and uh, he's one of the creators of the uh, the Sony Move, which is going on sale pretty soon. Hi, Richard. Hello. Uh, show us what uh, what you can do with the Move here. I have lots of different technology demonstrations that mm -hmm. show the Move off and what it can do. Mm -hmm. First of all, you see it involves the camera, the PlayStation Eye camera, so that's tracking the PlayStation Move, mm -hmm. where it is, and then there are sensors inside of the PlayStation Move, gyros, accelerometers, and magnetometer, mm -hmm. that give us the angle of the device. Mm -hmm. So the position comes from the camera, and the angle roughly comes from the sensors. So it's pretty accurate, uh, it's just the first thing you notice. That, um, yeah, it it's stays very on precise. whatever mm -hmm. I'm doing, and also I can control. Mm -hmm. I can do it in virtual space, or I can do it in this kind of augmented reality space. Mm -hmm. Do something really, really precise where I come in and I zoom and move around very precisely, mm -hmm. or I can control the angle very precisely. Mm -hmm. But still, I can move really quickly and it doesn't lose track. Uh -huh. So kind of this responsiveness and still be able to move really fast and uh, precisely is mm -hmm. really what we were going for. Uh -huh. You can do other things with it, which are uh, more like a. How do you draw with that one? I can select a color and then I can draw with that color. Mm -hmm. And it's using kind of the spatial tracking to draw with. It's really like I'm holding a giant pen in my hand or a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. It's not the angle of the device in that case, it's actually where it is when mm -hmm. I'm drawing. So it feels exactly like a real mm -hmm. pencil would. Uh -huh. So where is, where is the camera doing some work and where, where are the, uh, the controllers in your hands doing some work here? Like, so so mm -hmm. the, since it's tracking a sphere, mm -hmm. it, it, it finds where the sphere is, it sees the size of the sphere and mm -hmm. the location in the, in, in the video image, mm -hmm. and that's how it knows where the controller is. Uh -huh. And then to know how it's oriented, what angle it's being held at, that's from the internal sensors. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I can, I can do it separately with both controllers, you can draw mm -hmm. with this one. Or because <laughs> I'm left-handed, but mm -hmm. um, let's see other things we can do with this controller. So one of the points is you want just a wide variety of experiences here. Uh, exactly. Here I can use something like I can, uh, mm -hmm. I can pick up a sword, I can reach in, and I can interact with the 3D world. Mm -hmm. Again, because it is tracking it in 3D, it knows the position of it and the angle. I can really reach into a 3D space, mm -hmm. move something around. Actually, this demonstration was developed to work with a 3D television as well. Mm -hmm. So when you put on the 3D glasses and look at this, it looks exactly like I'm interacting in 3D. Mm -hmm. Have the light here. And you can still use it in a really kind of sword-like way to chop something up. Poor crash dummy. Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then we have another demonstration, which is you know, similar. I can see my hands, mm -hmm. and the angle of my hands and the position are being tracked. Mm -hmm. I could do things like I could throw something, or I could, in this case, we have a fireball, or I can shoot mm -hmm. fire particles between my hands. I can gather them together into a tight focus, or I can spread them out into a really wide area. Mm -hmm. And I can throw the fireball in a certain direction. So, mm -hmm. you can so do that, again, you can do that in. That's your object. magic game, I guess? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, to yeah, do something with like a magic spell casting. Mm -hmm. You can do that in augmented reality or back in the virtual space. Mm -hmm. Uh, the game choice is always gets to choose whether it wants to make this kind of augmented reality game with video or just a more of a traditional um, 3D graphics mm -hmm. virtual space. Let me show you another demonstration. Uh, this one is a little bit like maybe like a minority report or something where I can use the controllers mm -hmm. almost like a mouse but mm -hmm. in front of me in 3D space. I can create a window, mm -hmm. I can move it around. I could throw the window off the edge. Mm -hmm. I could, uh, I can change what's on the window. I could have it be a, a grid pattern or something. Mm -hmm. And again, if I make several of them, you can see that they're in 3D if I move them behind each other. Mm -hmm. But really, this kind of multi-touch thing has been done before by people. But with Move, we have the ability to make it more like with a flexible 3D object. So mm -hmm. I have all that angle data and the position mm -hmm. data. So mm -hmm. I can really kind of move it around. Mm -hmm. And I can do that as if it was uh, mm -hmm. in this augmented space, or I can switch it to be into a virtual space again. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can so switch the object. You can do a video like mm -hmm. that. Uh, so now you're really talking about things you can't really do with a, a regular controller. I right. Guess, yeah. There's not really any way to get this kind of mm -hmm. freedom of motion with the regular controller. I can mm -hmm. do these kind of things with just one of the controllers, too. See, I'm not even using this one. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
but it, it feels a little bit more natural to use too. Mm -hmm. Different kinds of uh, pictures we could make, and this is just like creating almost like a three D desktop now. Mm -hmm. It really is like a three D mouse, and I'm creating these three D objects. You have a web page you'd open up and place it where you want or something. Mm -hmm. We have a. You can imagine walking into a in a role playing game, you walk in and you find a, a map and you open it up, or a scroll and you mm -hmm. open it up. Mm -hmm. Put a map up there on the wall. <laughs> then the last thing that's really mm -hmm. neat about this, mm -hmm. because we are tracking in such good 3D, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and uh, with all the angles and the position, I can actually take myself and kind of move myself into that 3D world. This mm -hmm. is what we call camcorder mode. Mm -hmm. Where this controller is, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch myself to be looking at the world from its point of view. Mm -hmm. So if I do that now, mm -hmm. when I move closer, I really like zoom in on something. Mm -hmm. I move around. It's really like I'm looking at the world from the point of view of the controller. Mm -hmm. And I can still use my other controller to reach in and maybe grab something and throw mm -hmm. it or move it around. Mm -hmm. But I have this controller as my way of looking at the world. So imagine a, a mm -hmm. horror game where you're exploring with that kind of mode. Uh -huh. Can can you explain a little also how about how it's different from the Wii and the Wii um, Motion Plus? Um, I think uh, the, the accuracy is a, a big difference. Uh, but, you know, people people are used to playing tennis on the Wii, uh, but ping pong in sports champions is is a very different kind of game, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. So one of the big differences is it's, mm -hmm. there's a precision difference, but mm -hmm. there's a fundamental difference, which is we know where the controller is because mm -hmm. we have the camera looking at it. We know exactly where it is. So I can really do things where it actually matters exactly where I am. In this case, we have a, a carving tool. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be like a piece of marble. I can spin it around. But mm -hmm. I can really reach in exactly where I want, and I can carve away something. Mm -hmm. I can carve away something here. Mm -hmm. Or if I switch tools and I switch mm -hmm. the thing, I can actually grab something and really move, really bend it or move it. I have a few different objects. In this case, mm -hmm. you can imagine I have a sword, and I want to just change its shape. Mm -hmm. And in this when I can do that, I can really, it's mm -hmm. because I have the position of it as well as its angle. Mm -hmm. Not just how I'm swinging it. It really matters that I know where it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, to also to do things like painting. If you really want to paint something, I can pa precisely paint exactly where I want. Mm -hmm. I need to know where the controller is to do that, though. Mm -hmm. uh, something like this. And can you also talk about how, um, if you just had a camera only, like the the old eye toy, um, that experience was limited in some ways? So, yeah. With with the old eye toy, with just mm -hmm. the camera, even if, mm -hmm. if if you didn't have a marker, it's really hard to do anything where you know exactly where something is. Mm -hmm. People look different. Um, the mm -hmm. backgrounds all look different. So mm -hmm. the visual marker that we're using really helps. Mm -hmm. But also, besides just the visual marker giving us a lot of precision, mm -hmm. having the extra sensors so we can know the angle of what's going on, mm -hmm. and having the buttons so we can control the action of what's going on mm -hmm. matter a lot. Mm -hmm. Not not being able to do that would limit what we have. We'd have kind of a partial answer, mm -hmm. but we wouldn't have the full answer. Mm -hmm. We'd have maybe just the position and not very accurately mm -hmm. in that case. Mm -hmm. Whereas now we have angle and position. So we have a lot more things we can do with it. Mm -hmm. And these new 3D cameras, like uh, what Kinect uses, are interesting, but um, but they're expensive now, I guess? Um, they they are very interesting to me from mm -hmm. a technological point of view. Mm -hmm. They are expensive compared to a 2D camera, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and the amount of extra mm -hmm. data that you get is it's, it's definitely different data. You have mm -hmm. 3D data now, mm -hmm. but it still is kind of 3D data of the whole scene in a rough sense. Mm -hmm. It's not precise. And it's it it doesn't give you the same kind of uh, ability to reach into a three D world, I guess, mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. same way that the move gives you. Mm -hmm. It's it's neat technologically, but it is expensive, and it and mm -hmm. what it adds is uh, mm -hmm. you know not necessarily worth the cost, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And the the games that are coming, uh, you've got twenty or so games that de debut on on day one here. Um, uh, how would you describe those, and then how would you also describe maybe what might be the second wave of games that will come? Well, with, uh, mm -hmm. with the first games, you mm -hmm. just seen a really wide mm -hmm. set of experiences. We have a uh, party game like Start the Party. We have sports titles like Sports Champions. Mm -hmm. We have uh, some shooters like Resident Evil and Time mm -hmm. Crisis, and mm -hmm. some first-person shooters. Mm -hmm. uh, Killzone is already announced support, and SOCOM mm -hmm. are coming. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of those are coming sometime next year, I guess. That, uh, sometime yeah. next year, or yeah. some a lot of those first yeah. ones are launch titles. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, uh, there's a game called Tumbo, which is a very like virtual uh, 3D world experience where you reach in and build things. Mm -hmm. So I think what's really interesting about ours mm -hmm. is it covers a really wide space. Mm -hmm. Oh, Roos, R U S E is yeah. a game that's been announced by Ubisoft. That's a mm -hmm. real time strategy game. Mm -hmm. Talked about sorcery uh, before. Yeah, that that a, got a pretty good response at E3. Sor yeah. Sorcery. And, yeah, because it's an action adventure game, and a lot yeah. of people kind of measure mm -hmm. things by that. That a lot of people like action adventure games. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the the first wave of games is covering a really wide space, and I think it, it, each different each new kind of wave of games mm -hmm. will explore even more space of what you can do with moves. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see mm -hmm. all those different dimensions explored. Mm -hmm. it, it is almost like a platform for us. It's, it's not mm -hmm. like good for one thing. It's mm -hmm. not what it was intended to be mm -hmm. and it's not what it is. Okay. It's meant to be able to change experiences across the board. Mm -hmm. And we can, we can end with, what is this last demo you're uh, showing this here? One is a, mm -hmm. This one is a, a, it's a fly-through demo where you uh -huh. actually can change the world, you can see the world from a different point of view and fly in in 3D. Mm -hmm. And I can set it back over here. Mm -hmm. Fly right in. As if I'm flying with the controller. <laughs> I'm zooming back up. Uh -huh. And I can change kind of the perspective where we are. So now I'm flying around in 3D. Uh -huh. I can make everything fall from the sky. Mm -hmm. And it's just different things. We're exploring all the different things we can do with PlayStation Move. Mm -hmm. We have a, another 3D demo we call the Chameleon Demo, which is I have these hands and I'm like reaching into the 3D world and moving myself around the 3D mm -hmm. world by climbing on the branches. So again, these are just non-traditional game experiences of what, what, what you can do when you have a 3D input device. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Thanks. Thank you. That's Richard Marks from uh, Sony. Thanks.